You're listening to Small Business Conversations with PKJ Podcast, where your host, Phyllis Johnson of PKJ Consulting, interviews entrepreneurs and small business owners on their passion, their knowledge, and their journey they took to start and grow their business. This podcast is meant to inspire, inform, and empower others interested in becoming successful. Are you ready to start on your own journey to success? Greetings and welcome to another edition of Small Business Conversations with PKJ. I'm your host, Phyllis Johnson of PKJ Consulting, where we help those who have a strong passion, understand and gain the knowledge needed to help them through their entrepreneurial journey. So as we all know, it's that favorite season of the year, tax season. It's a time that people either embrace or dread, where people are scrambling to gather their receipts, locate past filings, looking for additional kids to claim, find a tax person, and just get it over with. There are those that immediately contact me on January 2nd, ready to file their taxes and get that refund. While I have those that contact me the day that taxes are due to help them file an extension. It's interesting that we all know we have to file taxes every single year, but no one truly understands how the process works. As a tax professional myself, I felt that it was important to have a topic discussing tax prep. So today, I wanted to bring on a guest that also specializes in tax preparation, Sam Storr. Born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, Sam holds a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University in accounting. He's also a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. He's the owner and tax accountant at Advocate Tax Services, a tax preparation and small business consulting firm in Michigan. He also has over five years as a tax professional with experience in audit, bookkeeping, QuickBooks, fixed asset management, and depreciation in internal gap and property tax. In addition, he's also a podcaster at the ICE Podcast Network, where he is the co-host of the Iron Sharpens Iron Podcast. So without further ado, let's welcome Sam to the show. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing well. And yourself? I am doing pretty well. Thank you. So tell me about the passion behind how you decided to get started focusing on accounting and taxes. Well, I was a father at the time, making minimum wage, you know, doing retail. I decided that I need to make a change. And my uncle actually has his own tax firm. So I always looked up to him and decided, you know, hey, let's try it out. Let's take a class, see if I like it. End up passing the class with flying colors. So I decided to stick with it. Interesting. That's funny. That's exactly how I got started. My best friend, my best friend and I in high school in 10th grade, we took an accounting course uh, at a community college and uh, we both loved it. And so now she's an accountant and I'm an accountant as well. So I guess, you know, kind of how you all get started. You just take a leap and, you know, try to take a class and see if you like it. Um, so you enjoyed doing the accounting. So how did you get the knowledge to, you know, become successful and then end up starting your own business? Well, after graduation, I actually started working for my uncle. And so I got to know, I got to learn all the ins and outs of small business, tax preparation, bookkeeping, payroll taxes, you know, food, food, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and also helping people actually establish organizing and filing with the state and then filing the, I just learned all the trinkets and ins and outs of small businesses. So after we decided to part ways, I was left on my own to kind of figure it out. So I decided to open my own firm, you know, and do, I had clients already who I used to do their taxes for them. So it was an easy transition. So that's kind of how it happened. Okay, great. So how long did you work for your uncle? It was, I worked with him from July until April, one tax season. That's pretty much all I could do because we we're kind of very similar. So we like to bump heads a lot. And, <laughs> you know, it was it was more of a teaching experience, like a hardcore learning experience. All in, you know, go for it. And then so. Yeah. So you pretty much, you know, didn't even work for him for a year and then took the leap to just go for it on your own. So what was that experience like when you decided, you know what, I'm going to do this for myself? Tell me a little bit more about that journey. Well, it was hands-on. So 
I believe in myself. So I believe that any time that I want to do something, I'm going to do it. It was the same way with graduation. It was the same way with, you know, learning exactly how taxes work and how to make it better. But I also had a drive to help people who were kind of like just getting started, like how to build, how to use Excel for their benefit, how to build income statements, how to because a lot of people just don't know how to do it. So that was my drive. So that's where I started. And now I help 10 companies right now just evolve and build until they can go on to CPAs and things like that. So I'm kind of like your starting accountant. Okay, that's great. So you pretty much work with you know small business owners until they're ready to grow and take it to that next level. That is perfect. So how long have you been in business? Um, I've been in business for five years. I've been doing taxes probably a lot longer than that, maybe eight years or so. Okay, great. Like the VITA program and things like that, you know. Nice. So now that I understand more about your journey, you also do tax services, but you're also a podcaster. So how did you decide to go from taxes to also doing a podcast? Well, I'm I'm kind of a talker. So... <laughs> And then me and my best friend, usually we have these um, little get togethers, little small manner. So we both are classified alphas. So we sharpen each other, make our skills better, make our, you know, just keep each other accountable to what we're trying to achieve in life. And that's where we came up with Iron Sharpens Iron, where it's two black men who talk about love, sex, relationships, and everything in between. So he's actually somebody who used to work in finance. I'm an accountant. So we do talk a lot about our personal journeys and our businesses, but we also just real, just keep it real, real explicit, real conversations. Nice. Okay. So that sounds fun. So definitely going to have to take a listen to that because that's interesting. So (laughs) so as a tax professional, tell me about your biggest when, you know, when you were going down that path to start your own business and do it on your own, tell me one of your biggest success stories. My biggest success story was getting an audit completed on a high, high price client. Um, this is when I worked for my uncle, when I knew I could do this full time for myself. He had this big client who was going through a big, a big audit. And I was able to prove that he did not owe the money that they say he owed, he owed them by basically showing down how he didn't have certain things listed correctly on his own personal QuickBooks. And I easily was able to show that, oh, these are supposed to be, you know, credits, not debits. And that's that's an accounting term, of course. But <laughs> I pretty much was able to prove that, you know, he just booked his information wrong because he didn't want to pay the extra money to have a bookkeeper so when I did the basic bookkeeping and did a complete tr- audit of his own books, I was able to prove that in court. In court, so that, to me, that was a pretty big win and kind of let me know that I'm on the right path. Wow! So pretty much your success story goes along with just taking the opportunity to do everything on your own, and then you know getting a win. So that definitely is a good story because um, audits are not fun at all. (laughs) So congratulations. So that's a win. Tell me about a loss, you know, something that happened in your business where you had to step back and kind of reboot or learn a lesson. Well, the lessons that I had to learn was from people used to always refer me, but it's a loss, but in my mind, it's a win because I lost like a couple clients because I'm too much by the book. So yeah, they didn't want to work with me. They didn't want me to do their taxes for them because I'm not just going to give you what you want. I'm going to tell you what's correct. So what a lot of people don't realize is you can't get ahead just by lying and you're married, but you can't file separately. You're married now, unless you file married, filing separately. Like I'm very by the book. Um, it's a reason I have the record that I have. I've never been audited since I've been in business. So I want to keep that streak alive. And in case you do get audited, I got proof. So I'm not going to just do what you tell me. I'm going to do what's right. 
I agree with you. You know, I'm the same way. Uh, you know, I'm my mom worked for the IRS for 30 years, for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, kind of know the ins and outs a bit about how the IRS works. And um, there are people who want you to bend the rules a little bit, but I have not met that client that will pay me enough to go retire in the Bahamas <laughs> yet. Yes, to, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times, you know, and I tell people all the time, um, just like what Sam said, is you have people who want to alter something, but a lot of times those tax people who do that, and I have a lot of clients who have this happen, they go to someone who's willing to bend the rules. And nine times out of 10, they get that letter from the IRS that says, okay, we need more information to verify this. And then they reach out to that person that they found on the street corner or who's handing out flyers or knew somebody who knew somebody. And that person is now nowhere to be found because they aren't an official tax person. And I say this on my Facebook every season, just because your cousin, sister, uncle, daddy, baby, mama could do taxes does not mean that you should be letting them do your taxes, especially if you're a small business. Make sure that person has a P10 number so it's something that is reportable and you can kind of research and locate that person. So definitely nothing wrong with being by the book because you don't want to mess up your good record for anybody. So that's great. So we are in tax season right now. Can you share you know, a couple of tips for people as far as how to prepare for tax season? The biggest thing that I would tell anybody, have all your forms ready to go. So I know that a lot of companies wait till the last week of January to send your forms. Um, you want to make sure that everything's right. So like, it's still like the healthcare law is still in effect. It's your W-2s, any W-9s. Be open and honest with whoever's preparing your taxes. I always tell people, did you go to school? If your tax preparer is not asking you questions, that should be a problem. If you're not asking your tax preparer questions, that's also a problem. You need to know what you're signing because you're signing this legal document. You should want to know what's on it. So no secrets. I want you to ask me questions so I can answer them and reassure you I'm doing them right. That's probably the biggest thing. So no secrets. That is huge. You know, um, and I'm sure you, you have a lot of stories where, you know, you are meeting with the tax person and they're giving you 72% of the information. And then mm-hmm. you start to have to keep asking more and more questions. So like he said, have all your information ready to go to, you know, meet up with the tax person so that it gets done quickly and efficiently. Do you have any other tax tips that you want to share for small business owners in particular? Make sure anything that you purchase that you have a receipt for, make sure that your mileage is logged, make sure you have receipts for all the gas that you have spent that that's very important because I've noticed that they're really cracking down on that. You know, I still haven't really seen the forms. I only see the, it's still pending right now in my system. So I haven't yet to put eyes on it. So that's what I'm kind of, the ones I'm seeing, I'm kind of scared to look at right now, but (laughs) that's very important. Like we need documentation. It's the more you got, the better. Uh, No guesswork. (laughs) So no, definitely. So a lot of my clients ask the same question, so I'm going to get your opinion on it. Receipts. Okay. What are the rules, in your opinion, regarding receipts? I mean, at this point, we all use our credit cards and we use our you know, check. We swipe, swipe, swipe. Very few people actually use cash. So what are the rules when it comes to receipts for like gas or you know, those little small items that you use for your credit card? So I always tell clients... Anything that you use for a business, please swipe because then I can just take your bank statements and just analyze that. Download it to Excel and spit it back out and I can get a detailed account of what you've spent. So that's the easiest. That's the best thing I can tell anybody. Use credit cards. I know it's debt. I know. But it's, as long as you're making enough revenue to cover that, you should be fine. That's the easiest paper trail you can have. So. A lot of people are cash based. So when you're cash based, you must keep receipts. So when you use a card, you can get away with not having a receipt. But when you're cash, 
when you use a lot of cash, you got to have the receipt market down, um, have that tax prepared, be your bookkeeper as well. I offer a discount for people who do that service with me so I can make sure that they're in line with everything they want. But a lot of times your accountant knows all your business. So get somebody you can trust. <laughs> Very true. So he put on two big things. So what he said, if you use your credit card, you have all the information there, you are okay. If you use cash, keep your receipts. And then the other thing that he pointed on was sometimes it's good to have your bookkeeper also do your taxes. Um, and I know that's something that he offers and it's something that I offer as well because it's a lot easier if you have the same person doing everything year round because we already know what you want. And, you know, really when it comes to taxes, you should be planning for the next year, meaning, you know, January of 2019, we should be planning what your tax strategy is for the entire year instead of looking backwards. You know, are you trying to purchase a house or are you trying to get a business loan or are you trying to sell your company? Because all of those are going to dictate your tax strategies for the year. A lot of times people are always operating in arrears, you know, so that's something that he pointed on was having your bookkeeper also work on your taxes or at least having a partnership. So you have a bookkeeper, tax person that kind of work together so that everyone's on the same page. That's definitely a good point. So I'm going to move on a little bit and we'll, you know, take, right. give people a little break from all the tax talk. <laughs> <laughs> all this accounting all talk. The accounting talk. But this is really good information because a lot of times, you know, when tax season comes, people just don't know, you know, and they don't know what they don't know. So that's why I really want to have Sam on my podcast today. So tell me a favorite book, website, or podcast that you like. Let's see. Um, hmm. A favorite podcast that I like, it's kind of like the Rachel Maddow Show podcast because I'm always on the go. I don't really watch TV, but the news affects everything. So anybody who is a tax professional probably listens to some type of NPR podcast or the Rachel Maddow Show podcast because everything that's going on in the world affects taxes. Like I learned about the tax law through her show. I was like, oh, they really passed this thing. Okay, I need to look into this. So, you know, NPR, politics, all this stuff is connected. You know, I just, when I listen to podcasts or read books, like I'm actually, I'm reading a few different things. I'm kind of focused on like my tax books, but that nobody would ever read unless you're an accountant. So I don't want to recommend that. <laughs> but yeah, I typically try to listen to podcasts and that's kind of why I started because I enjoyed it. And I'm like, man, I need some more, you know, color in my podcasting. So here I come. <laughs> so that's kind of like what I like to listen to, like more pol political than, you know, what's going on in the world because that affects everything, especially things that I do. Perfect. So what he was saying is Rachel Maddox podcast, but more importantly, what he was saying is he listens to podcasts that helps him in his business. And I'm the same way, you know, I know when I wanted to start a start podcasting. I was listening to podcasts, how to start a podcast. Um, I listened to, you know, Jenna, I listened to all kinds of different podcasts, depending on what it is I want to learn. And the other thing his, he said was podcasting on the go, you know, so that's another good thing that you can do when it comes to podcasts is, you know, listening to them in your car, on vacation, you know, at the gym, anywhere that you want to go. So that's great. So Sam. Yeah. If we have to wrap it up, can you tell me a little bit more about your business in terms of do you do you work with remote clients or only those in Michigan? I actually do remote mostly. I do taxes for anybody in America. Even if you're in the Army, Navy, don't really matter. Everything is through my email address that um, advocate tax services at gmail.com. I answer questions. I I'm always on Facebook kind of dropping little nuggets, which I'm going to start doing in a few um, about the tax season, what you can expect. You know, I'm always open, always answering questions. You know, if if I feel like the price that I would charge you is too much and you really just need to do something real simple, I would just advise you to do so. So I'm not here just to get anybody's money. I'm here to advise people. That's pretty much what I do. So. Yeah, that's the best way to get in contact with me. 
you know, I'm probably going to do a podcast about taxes soon myself on my podcast. That's weekly. So, yeah, just hit me up. Perfect. So he provided his email address. Do you want to also provide, do you have a website, a Facebook, any other ways to reach you? Facebook.com slash Advocate Tax Services. My name is Sam Storr, S-T-O-R-R. You can find me on Facebook. I'm usually, I might say something crazy. (laughs) It's it's an open podcast. I got a personality, you know. (laughs) But yeah, I'm always open to answer anybody's tax questions. No problem. Perfect. So Sam, I definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come onto my podcast today and talk about a topic that people don't truly love, but definitely need to learn a little bit more about, especially, you know, during tax season, you know, thank you for helping me hopefully make this a little bit easier so I can recommend this to some of my tax clients during tax season. So just take a listen to and of course, we have to share this in the Black Podcast Network. Yes, everyone needs to listen to this. So they, well, and especially, you know, the important thing about taxes is if you do it right, you'll end up saving time and you'll end up saving money. And those two resources you can't, you know, you got to utilize. So I want to thank Sam today for being on my podcast. And as always, feel free to listen to another episode of Small Business Conversations with PKJ. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Small Business Conversations with PKJ. Want to learn more or listen to prior episodes? Go to pkjpodcast.com. Please tune in to the next episode where we will interview another amazing guest on their passion, knowledge, and journey to success.